Okay, so now let's go over to my scene panel and just open up the information about this cube. Here, when, you, when I've got my cube selected, you see the transform information in my info panel. And by typing in numbers in here, um, adjusting these numbers, I can move, rotate and scale uh, this just the same way as using these tools here, but with an extra degree of accuracy by just using these numbers. When I click on the arrow next to Q, it opens up the default material. By clicking on that, I open up in my um, panel, in my info panel, all the information about that default material or texture. A texture is the image that is placed on a, a 3D object. So right now my 3D object looks just at flat and plain and doesn't look like much. So if I want to get something looking more realistic, I need to put a texture or material on it. Let's take a quick look at how to do this. First of all, I'm going to change my uh, lighting back to the original lighting that was in this scene. And again, doing that by grabbing a light from my lighting and just dragging and dropping it on here. And there we go, it's altered that lighting to be there. So to put a material onto this, I can just select my cube, find my materials. So this can be your materials in your assets or from your CC libraries and then just click on one of your materials and it will place it onto that. Here I've placed a metal material on and if I open up my preview, I can see now that I have a different kind of image here. It's now got this particular kind of texture on it and it's looking red and it's looking slightly metallic. Well, what if I want to change to a different one? Let's try a wooden texture. So with it selected, I just click and there it's changed it to a wooden texture. And if I zoom in on that, now it's looking a little more like something. It's looking a bit like a block of wood. And so texturing a model by placing pictures on the faces of a model, we can make that model look like something. And basically everything in, in our world is basically some kind of shape and we see it uh, as, as it is real and we copy that realism by copying the shape in 3D and putting an image of that particular item on there to make it look like it really exists. Let's click now into the texture and take a look, a brief look at the breakdown inside this texture. So in my left hand side of my scene, I'm going to click on the texture that's the section underneath my model. And in my information panel, I now have the information about that texture. There is a whole bunch of different things in here. And uh, they, although they look um, a little bit um, complicated, um, Adobe has done a really good job in simplifying a texture down to some very basic points. Um, you could multiply the sliders and the information that you have here in a texture by 10 times to 100 times in a th professional 3D piece of software, and it gets very complicated. So they have, uh, although it looks a little detailed, they've really brought it down to be its very basics. First of all, we have our base color. And to show how this works, I am going to click on this little color picker and currently it doesn't have a color on it, it has a picture on it. It has a picture of a piece of wood. However, if I click on this color picker, it's going to pop up and tell me changing the color would discard the texture or the picture that's on there. Are you sure? Yes, we are. Now I have my color picker and I can move around and let's say I choose this red and now it's changed to red. However, I hear you say, it still looks like there's a wood kind of texture underneath it. Where is that coming from? Well, that is something called a normal map or it's very similar to a bump map. 
and that's at the bottom of our information about a normal map. And any one of these sliders, if you just hover your mouse over the, uh, the title of its slider, you'll get a window that comes up and tells you exactly what it does, and a brief description and a little video of it. So here the brief description says, normal maps often come with existing models to simulate fine details such as wood grain or surface cracks. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So the top, the base color, um, can either have a color or a picture applied to it. Right now it's got a color to apply a picture. You click the icon next to it and then click here to choose a file and you could put any kind of picture on there, a PNG or a JPEG. I'm not sure if you can put PSDs, but usually you'd put a JPEG or, or a PNG on there. A normal map, um, however, um, isn't the same as a regular picture. It's kind of a picture with parts of that picture altered um, so that it can make the um, dips and the um, different height, um, what do we call it? We call it kind of like the, the peaks and the dips in um, something look real. Now, previously, before you had normal maps or bump maps, this could be replicated, this kind of like texture, wooden texture on top of this, this wooden details here, could have been created uh, all using 3D. But the more complex a 3D model is, the more memory it takes and the slower down the computer will go. So what they found was they found a way of doing it by kind of tricking and making it look, look like, by using an image, just making it look um, and mimic the way that light would bounce off of little grooves and details. So these wouldn't couldn't be huge um, dips and peaks and valleys. These can only be little details, um, but they make a big difference in how real something looks and without taking a lot of memory by having a very, very detailed 3D object. OK, so this has got a normal map here. So let's say now I just wanted this to be this red color and didn't want it to have any of this wooden kind of texture on it. Well, to get rid of a texture, you click again on the little image area next to it and just click the garbage bin um, and it, there we go, it'll change. So now this has changed from that. However, it still has a little bit of of something to it, doesn't it? A little bit of like sheen here. Let's see, it looks shinier here than it does does here. It looks rough here and shiny here. Well, that's because this has got two other kinds of textures on it, a roughness and metallic texture. Let's take a look at what those are. The roughness, how shiny a surface looks. When using an image, black areas will be polished and white areas will be matte. So this has got another image on it. And the way that this image has, has been made is that um, some areas of the image have been painted uh, white, which are glossy. And oh, did I get that right? White is glossy. Black areas will be polished, sorry. Black areas will be here where the shininess is and uh, white areas will be where the roughness is. And so this has given that kind of, of, of glossiness and sheen. And metallic and roughness go together. Here, if I hover over the metallic, it says, when using an image, black areas will be non-metallic and white areas will be metallic. So again, this has got an image that does that as well. So let's remove those images and we'll go now to our completely to our base. OK, so without the textures there, I can use the sliders instead. So let's take a look at using the sliders. So as I reduce the roughness of my slider of my material, you see it gets more reflective. And so light starts making it look brighter. As I reduce the metallic, if I bring the metallic down, now I start adding a bit of metallic type um, shading to my um, to my material. What other things have I got? Well, I've got glow. If I move this up and down, I can change my objects to make it as if it is a glowing object, um, a bit like a light or just a, an LED or something like that that would just glow. I've got opacity, which alters the complete transparency of the material to make it see through, kind of like glass or completely opaque. And then I've got another section, which is called the interior. And this has got translucence 
index of refraction and density. So let's take a quick, uh, let's just quickly review this. Hover over translucence and it says the amount of light able to refract through an object combine with other interior properties to make materials like glass, wax or liquids. Right, so why can't you just use opacity for this and make it transparent? Well, although things like a glass are transparent, light doesn't go completely through them. Um, for instance, in wax or even in human skin, light passes into it and some of it um, is absorbed by the material and some of it bounces back out of the material. And that's what give you, give you that kind of glowiness of a um, of something like water or um, or wax. And um, the way that this works is um, you alter the translucency um, and this alters how much light is going to be able to go inside this material and bounce around inside it. Then you alter your index of refraction. Now, how does this work? Well, if you've ever stuck a stick into um, into a pond and the stick looks like it's bending when it actually isn't, this is because um, water has a different refraction level than um, air. So the index of refraction in air is right at the bottom of this slider, which is one. And as you slide it up, I think it's around about 1.6 or something like that, or 1.35, that is the index of refraction of water. So um, that is how um, light would hit into something and then kind of curve and give you that look that the stick inside the water is, is bending when it isn't. But by being able to copy that, you can make something realistically um, look like a, um, a physical material in the physical world. Then density, I hover over that and it says this is adjust the clarity of the interior volume to be clear or foggy. So for instance, water has got a pretty clear density, usually unless it's got muck in it, but pure water has got a kind of a clear density. However, wax has got a bit of a blurry um, density. In fact, over here in our materials, one of our default materials is wax. And if I zoom in on this, you see that light is gone in it and some of it is absorbed and some of it bounces out, but its density is quite high. So the light that bounces out of it, it may, it's got kind of a blurry look to it. It doesn't um, look completely transparent. However, if I zoom in on this glass, here we can see that light it is light can bounce through it, but we can see that it's kind of already in this glass and this just this depiction, we can see it's kind of bending the light. So you can play around with that. Um, I found the best way to figure these out, just say you want to build your own, is to use one of theirs and look at how theirs is set up. Let's do that real quickly. I'll select my cube, then I'll select glass. And I found that the glass can also look a bit like water. Then now my glass material is on my cube. I'll select my material in here. We can see that I have got all these numbers that I've got my index of refraction at 1.8. I've got my translucency at 1 and my density um, at 0 because the light um, kind of goes right through it and doesn't really blur as it, um, as it bounces out. So by looking at how they've made their materials, you can go ahead and either alter their materials to, um, to, to kind of take your own look or um, make your own complete own ones. Um, let's just take a real quick look at, at altering one. So I'm going to change this cube. I'm going to delete this cube. I'm going to bring a primitive into my workspace. I'm going to bring a sphere in. I find that a sphere is good for showing off materials and textures. And I'm going to now go over to my materials, my regular materials, and add a shiny plastic to it. And uh, we can see that this looks really good in, the, uh, in both the viewport and inside the preview. So what if I wanted to change this texture? I want the plastic, but I wanted it a different color. Let's take a look how we would do that. Go over to the scene panel and click on the material by opening up, clicking the arrow on the sphere, 
which is the model, and then go over and in our info panel we can see that we've got our base colour which is blue. So let's change that to another colour. I'm going to change it to a to a red. And there we go, we've we've taken a texture and we have customised it to, to add a look that we wanted to. So let's take a look at doing this with another texture, a little more complex texture. So I'm going to go into my libraries and inside my libraries I've got some fabric textures. So let me go to those. Here we go, we've got a cotton, cotton ribbed right here. So I'm going to select that and that'll apply that to the sphere. Just give that a second to load up. There we go. And sometimes I find that my preview takes a little bit to catch up. And if, if you find that it kind of pauses a little bit, then I find that uh, it's easy to get around that. Just make a slight move on the workspace and then your preview um, must get the information and, and then start to, uh, to change. So just say now, we, we see that we've got this fabric texture. Just say we wanted to alter this. Now, I find that this works with quite a lot of materials. Some it might not. So there's a uh, just a bit of just a bit of a word of warning right there. But I'm going to go again to the base color this time because this has got an image textured onto it. When I click the base color, it's going to ask me changing the color will discard the texture. Are you sure? Yes. So let's change this to a different color. Let's change it to a green. And we can see that even though that I've discarded that, that main texture image and changed this to green, we still have the look of this fabric texture. Why is that? Well, that is because the nooks and crannies of this, the, uh, the little indentations and uh, the, the small details, are, have been held inside of the normal map. And also there's a roughness and metallic um, texture and what this has done is it's telling the light that um, certain parts of this are reflective or very slightly reflective and certain parts aren't. So even though as I said I removed the main um, texture image and changed it to a colour, I've still retained the look and feel of this this texture overall. And so you can test this out with different textures that, that come standard. And I found that uh, the majority of the ones that I've used so far have worked with this. And this obviously opens up a, a bunch of, um, of opportunities where you could put a, a material texture on a, a chair that you were testing out for someone and change the colours to, to different colours and, and see which ones you liked or showcase uh, a product with fabric on it with, with multiple different colours on it. In fact, I'm going to do that in, in just a little while. I'm going to bring a, a, a chair onto the uh, workspace and put a fabric uh, texture on it and then alter that fabric texture. But um, before we do that, um, I'm going to just go over how to, again, how to apply that background image and um, and then use that background image as a, as a, your image based lighting. And I want to show you this example because it this particular example that I found really makes a huge difference. And then we'll use that information that we've learned from the texture here, and that we've learned then from that image based lighting on um, both the uh, the little example of the chairs, and then uh, we're going to do a full on workflow and add the uh, add Felix into a a real life workflow. Okay, so next let's take a look first at the background image based light example that I want to show you. 